Welcome to the home of Noble Warriors. The 11th Infantry Battalion, also known as the Lapu-Lapu Battalion of the Philippine Army. The 11th Infantry Battalion logo is unique and meaningful as it considers a real Filipino hero as its symbol, Lapu-Lapu. He is considered as the first Filipino hero famously known for vanquishing foreign conquistador Ferdinand Magellan and his army in their attempt for colonization. Seen by his enemies not just as a courageous and a good tactician but as a principled man as well. His reputation precedes him, weaving history of myth into the fabric of modern Filipino culture. Other symbols in the unit logo include the shield, which symbolizes the battalion's commitment and dedication in defending the nation against lawless elements. The numerical 11 located in the shield's upper part, which stands for the unit's numerical designation. The blue color, which stands for peace and the unit's proper fight against the state's enemies. The yellow color, which represents friendship and reconciliation which the battalion offers to dissidents who wish to return to the folds of the law. The white color symbolizes purity and sincerity in working together with the people as partners for peace and progress. And finally, the red color which represents the gallantry to the men in uniform in defending our country against subversive elements and stands for their bravery in facing any threat to national security. The 11th Infantry Lapu-Lapu Battalion traced its humble beginning in 1970 when the 41st Battalion Combat Team was renamed into 21st Battalion Combat Team along with Light Armor Infantry Concept. Later, it was renamed again as 1st Infantry Battalion of the 3rd Infantry Brigade of the Philippine Army. Pursuant to General Order Numbers 42, Headquarters 3rd Infantry Brigade Philippine Army dated 15 December 1971. The unit was redesignated as 11th Infantry Battalion effective 26 November 1971 under Lieutenant Colonel Francisco M. Esmas as 1st Battalion Commander of the unit. The Muslim secessionists called Barracudas Muslim Fighter Commanders were the first enemy being confronted by the unit in Lanao del Norte. After a successful stint, the unit was pulled out in Mindanao and brought back to Camp Lapu-Lapu, Cebu City for retraining with the Kamagong and Malawi warfare concept. In their redeployment in June 1974, the unit under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Federico A. Macabasco became famous during the Operation Tanwell under Central Mindanao Command in Maguindanao. Operationally controlled by the Task Force Pagkakaisa in May 1974 covering North Watabato, where the unit was awarded its Central Mindanao Commander Streamer Award in January 1975. The recovery of Balabagan in September 1976 in Lanao del Sur, operationally controlled by Task Force Burbina in May 1982 in Camarines Sur, and Task Force Sugarland in June 19, 1985 in Negros Island. After a few months of combating the CPP, NPA, NDF insurgents in Central Negros, higher headquarters recognized the unit's achievements by awarding the most coveted Chief of Staff Armed Forces Streamer Award. Pursuant to General Orders No. 15, General Headquarters AFP dated March 18, 1988 by General Arturo Enrile, the AFP Chief of Staff, received by then Colonel Julius Javier, Commanding Officer of the Unit. After a successful counterinsurgency campaign in Negros, the battalion moved to Northern Negros similarly combating insurgency. In 1991, under Major Alfonso Crucero, the unit scored heavily against the rebels and several top communist leaders were captured. 1992 had been a good year for the unit. The 11 IB then operated with three rifle companies, the Alpha Company under Lieutenant Sir Lito E. Sobihana, Bravo Company under Lieutenant Ernest Mark P. Rosal, and Charlie Company under Lieutenant Roberto T. Enfan, and one provisional company under Lieutenant Nelson L. Trujillo. The unit was able to reduce enemies' organizing capability. 
in recognition of these achievements, the 3rd Infantry Division awarded the unit as its best combat unit. The unit placed forth among the 72 infantry battalions in the entire Philippine Army. After a rating of outstanding accomplishments for the unit, Lt. Col. Alfonso Crucero turned over the battalion's stewardship to Major Victor S. Ibrado. In April 1995, the battalion moved to central Mindanao in Cotabato covering the province of Sultan Kudarat and parts of Maguindanao. The year 1997 was also a productive year for 11 IB. However, most of the unit's efforts were utilized in the conduct of small unit patrols, security on government development projects, and CMO activities because of the extended peace negotiation between the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the government. The unit was also utilized in the anti-kidnapping operations as the task was turned over from PNP to AFP. The unit actively participated in this endeavor under the Task Force Tugis of 6th Infantry Division, Philippine Army. The conduct of unit operations and civic action activities resulted in a good working relationship with the residents and the surrender of 15 MILF rebels at the battalion headquarters on April 7, 1997, bringing along with them 12 assorted high-powered firearms. On January 25, 1999, the unit participated in the division-wide operation against the MILF. The unit conducted a daring frontal attack against the enemy who were heavily entrenched on Paris range and later on captured Camp Afghan, a satellite camp of Camp Omar of the MILF. On August 13, 1999, the battalion was moved from Cotabato, Mindanao to Panay Island in Banga Aklan due to Visayas growing insurgency problems. September 2001, the battalion under Lt. Col. Ivan Samarita was ordered to consolidate force for deployment to Basilan, operationally controlled by 104th Infantry Brigade of the Philippine Army. The unit was tasked to participate in combat and rescue operations against the Abu Sayyaf group who was holding 11 hostages. The two-month-long brigade-wide operation resulted in several encounters and the safe rescue of the eight hostages. In November 2001, the unit was redeployed to Hulusulu with the mission of neutralizing the Miswari Renegade Group. In 2002, the unit pulled out from Hulusulu and was redeployed back in Negros Island, covering parts of Central Negros Occidental as its main area of operation. On November 26, 2006, the unit scored heavily against the local communist terrorists when they were able to monitor the plan to transport several rebels using a blue Toyota counter truck in Don Salvador Benedicto Negros Occidental. Using the information gathered and effective combat operation, this resulted in a successful neutralization of five rebels and recovery of five high-powered firearms and 19 backpacks containing subversive documents and personal belongings. On December 11, 2007, the unit was turned over to the command of Lt. Col. Franco Nemesio M. Gacal. With his sterling leadership, the unit internal security operations campaign against the communist terrorists resulted to four armed encounters all in favor of the government and five enemies killed with recoveries of high-powered firearms, equipment, and subversive documents. In the succeeding five years, the unit was able to maintain high-level standards as an infantry battalion. Subsequently, the unit was awarded as the best battalion of the 3rd Infantry Division in 2013 and 2014 under the leadership of Lt. Col. Paolito Idol, commanding officer of the battalion. In 2016, after the unit's long hiatus confronting of Muslim separatist group, the unit was reported in Mindanao under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Badwa as the commanding officer. 
the battalion was placed operationally controlled to the Western Mindanao Command and Joint Task Force Zamboanga on May 2017. Lieutenant Colonel Badwa turned over the command to Lieutenant Colonel Rolando P. Gomez with the specific mandate of protecting the people and securing 54 barangays mostly in the west coast of Zamboanga City. The unit was able to accomplish zero bombing and zero kidnapping. After almost three years of being upcon to join Task Force Zamboanga and Western Mindanao Command, the unit was reverted under Joint Task Force Spear Control, effective June 5, 2019, redeployed to Negros Island, covering 2nd and 3rd District of Negros Oriental to help quell communist NPA terrorists' effort in influencing a long focus area under the leadership of Lt. Col. Ramir J. Redosendo, commanding officer of the unit. On March 2020, the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic reached the Filipino audiences that resulted in declaring state of national emergency in the entire country as recommended by the Department of Health. All agencies are required to render assistance in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, the 11 IB under the leadership of Lt. Col. Ridosendo coordinated with head agencies, local chief executives, and stakeholders in the province to render full support and assistance in containing the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. This includes the conduct of checkpoints in quarantine control points, repacking and distribution of relief goods, security assistance in the distribution of the government's social amelioration program, loudspeaker operations for the information dissemination about the pandemic. Delivery of food packs to frontline workers, transportation of medical supplies and PPEs and several others. Just a year after requiring the Western Visayas from Mindanao amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the 11 IB remains steadfast on its mission as shown in the successful joint combat operation on June 18, 2020 in Barangay Luyang, Mabinay, Negros Oriental. The encounter resulted to the recovery of five dead bodies of communist terrorists and war material, including three M16 rifles, one AK-47, and a caliber 45 pistol, assorted magazines, rifle grenades, improvised explosive device, personal belongings, and voluminous subversive documents with high intelligence value. With these efforts, the 3rd Infantry Spirit Division Philippine Army awarded the 11 IB as the best battalion of the division for third quarter of calendar year 2020. On December 24, 2020, tactical engagement ensued between element of government and communist terrorists at Barangay Tayak, Chateau Negros Oriental. That killed two members of NPA and recoveries of one M16, one caliber 45, assorted magazines loaded with ammunition, personal belongings, communication equipment, and subversive documents. In February 14, 2021, his scout platoon and Alpha Company encountered the armed group at Marangay Napakao Chateau Negros Oriental, which resulted to two body counts on the enemy side and the recovery of several war material. Because of the exemplary performance of the unit in combat operation, the Southeast Front Comiteng Region Negro Cebu Bohol Sikihor was cleared on October 7, 2020 and was declared dismantled on April 6, 2021. Colonel Redesendo turned over the battalion stewardship to Lieutenant Colonel Roderick R. Salayo on May 11, 2021. Lieutenant Colonel Salayo started his early month in the unit through a successful strike operation of the operating troops that resulted in the apprehension of four NPA members on August 18, 2021 at Sitio Tamlang, Barangay Talalak, Santa Catalina, Negros Oriental. Revelations of said NPA members prompted the unit to restudy the growing remnants of Southeast Front dismantle and to give importance on intelligence gathering. This also brings on the implementation of sustainment operation complemented with intelligence-driven operation and focused civil-military operations efforts. 
with intensified information collection effort and a sigint. The unit zeroed in for a keyhole approach on seven hinterland barangays which are at the boundaries of five municipalities. Santa Catalina, Chaton, Valencia, Cibulan, and Pamplona, all of Negros Oriental. Notably, these areas are the long-time traditional influence barangays in Southern Negros. This paves the way for four successful encounters of the battalion scout platoon and company striking platoons with two body counts, one captured high-ranking NPA, and eight firearms recovered. Further, the intelligence operatives and CMO operators facilitated the surrender and apprehension of 21 communist NPA terrorists along with 9 firearms and 4 explosives, radios, ammunition, and subversive documents. Notably, former rebels were used productively, particularly in knowing the communist terrorist group more. Lt. Col. Salayo turned over the battalion's stewardship to Lt. Col. Michael C. Aquino on May 18, 2023. During the early months of Lt. Col. Aquino in the unit, he successfully facilitated focused military operations of the operating troops that resulted in the surrender of six NPA members. Revelations of said NPA members prompted the unit to restudy the growing remnants of Southeast Front dismantled and to give importance on intelligence gathering. This also brings on the implementation of sustainment operation complemented with intelligence-driven operation and focused civil-military operations efforts. Notable in the sustainment effort of the battalion is the participation of the provincial task force to end local communist armed conflict, particularly the local government units, non-government organizations, and other stakeholders in the implementation of the whole of nation and whole of government approaches, which bring the necessary services to the affected situs and barangays. The task force to end local communist armed conflict conducts the following activities such as Servicio Caravan, which brings basic services to the people in the community. Pulong Pulong, these concerts and information awareness drives, which are conducted alongside with the Servicio Caravan, radio broadcast system, and public affairs activities, which educate and entice the remaining NPA to surrender and to avail of the government assistance program. Program. Youth Leadership Summit in municipalities recently affected by the communist terrorist groups to make the youth aware of the deception of the CPP, NPA, NDF, and security assistance to the crucial LGU projects such as electrification, establishment of water system facilities, and more importantly, road rehabilitation and concreting, which serves as a precursor in improving the economic well-being and way of life of the people in the hinterlands. With intensified focused military operations, this resulted to one successful encounter of the battalion scout platoon and company striking platoons, which resulted to the recovery of one high-powered firearms, two low-powered firearms, four anti-personal mines, and grenades medical kit, subversive documents containing high intelligence value, which occurred at Sitio Talio, Barangay Milagrosa, Santa Catalina, Negros Oriental. This unit, together with the provincial government and LGU of Santa Catalina, empowered the youth sector of Tamlang Valley to be supplementary advocates for peace and progress by conducting a youth leadership summit held in Tamlang Elementary School with 108 youth delegates coming from the communist terrorist groups recovery categorized sitios of Barangay Talala, Amlang, Amuse, Sinamuhi, Avocado, Budlis, Abuyo, Kamangahan, Magtik, Takbog, Undol, Luas, Umol, Tokat, Mintalaukan, and Pakha. Also, the unit facilitated and brought the provincial government, led by Governor Manuel Chaco El Sagarbaria, provincial board members, the Department of Agriculture, Gender and Development Regional Coordinating Center, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the Department of Social Welfare and Development of the province. During the joint opening ceremony of banana crackers and ketchup livelihood training and closing ceremony of Youth Leadership Summit. 
during the conduct of checkpoints in relation to upcoming Barangay Sangguniang Kabataan elections along Negros Oriental. This unit effectively accomplished zero election-related incident from August 27, 2023 up to 31 October 2023. With the synergized and committed efforts, the insurgency of Negros Oriental will soon come to an end. The 11th Infantry Lapu-Lapu Battalion will continue to pursue institutionalization of all best and emerging practices with the end goal of attaining the mission of the unit. Lapu-Lapu warriors will continue to serve with gallantry and compassion in service to God, country and people. Thank you for joining us in our 52 years of meaningful journey.